you know, I live with my family and everything, that's, that's all good, but it's, uh, you know, I was looking for a way where I can engage more um, with people outside the studio. And, you know, teaching this sort of thing seems to be a really good way to get in touch with people, see what they like and try and help them. And maybe, uh, you know, maybe some people end up becoming professional artists themselves, or maybe they're already professional artists and just want to find out how different, you know, artist paints. Because I still regularly uh, go to workshops um, of the artists I admire, and I'm still always looking through books and, you know, uh, doing online workshops and all sorts of things. And it's just really helpful trying to learn from other people, you know, getting little tips and tricks and all sorts of things like that. Uh, are you living in London? No, I'm not living in London. I live about uh, just about an hour away from the centre of London. Uh, I lived in London for 20 years and it was just too hectic. Yeah, that's, that's great, Michelle. Yeah, I think actually, you know what it might be? It might be a case of... Um, doing a load of pre-recorded videos on things like preparation and, and things like that because it might be too difficult to sort of show what I'm doing, moving around the studio and cutting up dive bond panels and things like that. So I may actually sort of pre-record those sorts of things and maybe um, do the actual painting as a, as a live, um, you know, as a live thing. Yeah, good. Yeah, it is lonely, isn't it? I know. It's great. I mean, I love it. I mean, we all love it, don't we? But um, it's nice to meet up with people online. And, well, hopefully this works, you know. <laughs> Maybe it's going to be rubbish. I've done live painting demos before in front of people and so on, but not with all this tech around, all these cameras and things like that. And it's been nerve-wracking trying to get it all ready and sorted. Across the pond, eh? Oh, that's good. Yeah, trying to find a good time to do this as well was a bit tricky. There were some people from Australia and New Zealand, and I thought, oh my God, I don't know. If I'll be doing it in the middle of the night. Um, but let's see. Let's see how it goes. And, you know, maybe I could do them at different times. Didn't really get a lot of feedback from people about what time they would like me to do it. So in the end, I just picked a time. Um, but this will be, you know, I think YouTube records it so you guys can watch it back later on and, um, you know, and rewind and check things out and see how it goes. All right, well, we're nearly at five o'clock. We'll give people a few more minutes um, to see. Uh, if anyone's out there, just say hello quickly, whatever, that's fine. You know, no need to chat if you don't want to, if you just want to lurk and watch, that's totally fine. Um, but I'll just talk a little bit about uh, what we're going to do. Um, so the reference shot I have here is, um, he's an actor called Roland Moller. He's uh, a Danish actor and he's been in loads of movies. He always plays the bad guy, um, but he's, he's an excellent bloke and I've painted him a couple of times and he's so fun to hang out with. And even though he looks really serious in this picture, he's, he's really a lot of fun. But he just looks amazing, you know, and he's really fun to paint. And I hope you all uh, give it a shot, um, maybe not right now, or maybe you are set up right now, but, um, you know, have a go at, at painting um, this guy. And uh, I'll send you the reference picture to anyone who wants it, and they can have a go, and you can email me what you've done, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a, a critique, if you like. Um, anyway, so the first thing, um, the first thing that I do when I uh, get my um, my reference image, you know what? I'm going to go and sit by my. Uh, let me go and get in front of the painting. Right. Okay. Um, right, 
So before I do anything, before I even uh, set up my paints or any of that, I, uh, I look at my reference image and I really take my time getting to know this reference image, this person, and to try and think what is it that I really love about this picture? What's going to really sort of get me excited to paint this picture? And with this guy, already there's just such an intensity about him. I mean, it's, you know, you, you can see it immediately. This guy is serious. He's a, you know, he's a real contender. You wonder what, what his background is, what he's been up to. And quite often I'll invent all kinds of like crazy narratives as I'm looking at him and I'm thinking about it. And I'll start thinking about that and what I want to get across. I want to get across his seriousness. I want to get across his sort of almost chiseled like features that he has. And then I start looking at the picture in a sort of more technical way and I start thinking, right, okay, what colors are we looking at? Where are my lights? Where are my darks? Where are my midtones? What are the really interesting shapes that I want to sort of be able to get out of this in the drawing phase? Now, we're not going to do the drawing today. Uh, it, it, it takes too long. Um, and really the most important bit actually of starting a painting is getting a really, really good drawing in place because if your drawing skills are not absolutely spot on, you end up just chasing the likeness all around the canvas or panel the whole time you're painting and it can be immensely frustrating and painting is hard enough as it is. It's so hard trying to bring this three-dimensional form onto this two-dimensional surface and trying to get your colors right and trying to make it look cohesive and good that if your drawing's not solid, then it's just, you know, you're on a hiding to nowhere right from the start. So get your drawing onto your panel or canvas any way you want. It doesn't matter if you trace, if you project, if you do whatever, if you use a grid, any of that doesn't matter, right? You, this is all about painting right now. Drawing is another skill altogether, and it's something that takes absolutely years and years and years. And, you know, it's, it's something that, that I, I struggle with as well. I mean, it takes me a good sort of, I don't know, half an hour or so to draw a really decent sort of lightness um, using a paintbrush. So it takes a while, you know, to do it. And, uh, you know, get, get that drawing onto the pa panel any way you want, whether you trace it from, you know, your magazine or a printout or whatever. There are loads of ways of getting it on, onto the canvas. Projecting is really good, but you'll be careful for distortions and things like that. Um, but the, the key thing is that when you put your drawing onto the, the panel, just get the basic marks in place because you're going to lose the drawing anyway, right? Don't spend ages making a really detailed drawing on your panel or canvas. Just get in the sort of where the top of the brow line is, the bottom of the nose, the bottom of the chin, top of the, uh, the head, you know, and a basic sort of shape in place. Don't spend too long getting the details in because you're just going to paint over them anyway. You're going to lose them and, you know, your beautiful drawing, you might get a bit too precious about it. So don't worry about that. Okay, right. So once I've decided where are my darks, you know, I'm thinking about this area here. I'm going to probably block all of this in. Um, I'm going to be thinking about what am I going to be mixing for my skin tones, just roughly. And I'm thinking that where are my lightest lights? You know, the forehead, we can see this is a kind of, uh, whenever you're painting a face, you generally have a band of, of sort of warmth of blood that goes through the middle. And then we have a sort of, the bonier areas tend to be a little bit sort of desaturated or even yellow with the bone is sticking, it's very close to the skin surface. And we've got a beard today, so we're gonna, I'll show you a little, few little tricks for painting hair and beards and things um, of that nature. Um, luckily his mouth is quite nicely hidden here because that will save us some time. Because I tell you what, painting the mouth is extremely difficult. Um, the key is to paint it very, very softly. Um, it's why actually why painting women's faces is, is very, very difficult to get really, really nice because you will need such softness, such soft touches, or they start looking a bit masculine. And, uh, you know, there's, there's all sorts of nuance there, very, very subtle um, things to sort of focus on. And we can do that another time. 
um, but with guys like this, with gnarly faces like this, it's a little bit easier because you've got loads of nice marks, you know, underneath their eyes there, you know, this cheekbone sticking out on the side here, very sort of strong nose. These are really nice things to paint. They're really interesting um, and that will help you, right? So don't make life difficult for yourself. Just try your best to make life as easy as possible before you even start. Okay, all right, so it's a little bit about the drawing. Again, you know, this is just a tester. I can go into so much more detail in a sort of proper sort of workshop environment. Right, now, colors. Um, oh, well, maybe I'll just talk to you about my, my palette I've got here. I've tried all sorts of things. <laughs> There's a glass palette underneath here. I used that for years and years and years. And I was getting so fed up of just scraping it clean every day. But then I suddenly thought, well, I just want a bit of paper on there. And so I just bought this, this is like um, baking paper. It's like this non-stick paper. And it just means that you can do a painting session and then rip it off. And actually I keep them all separate. And then I have a, a fire out the back every now and again to, to get rid of them. But you can just chuck this away. And it's just really nice, quick, easy, no messing about. You can tidy up after your session really quickly. Um, what else? Yeah, I have a vertical, so it sits right next to my painting. It's in the same light as my painting. So when I'm mixing my colors here, I can see them really nice and easily, and I can go straight over to the painting. But quite often I'll just test it on the painting itself, and you'll see me do that, and you think, I'll think, oh no, I've got that wrong, because it's actually, it's much more difficult to see it over here than it is on the actual painting itself. Once it's down on the painting, it's relative to the other colors around it that makes the, the color, you know, that's how you determine what it is that you're trying to, to put down. Um, also, this isn't gonna be an exact formula of painting because there are just so many things that can go wrong along the way that you shouldn't be worried about it. Just accept it, it's gonna go wrong, loads, all the time. But every time something goes wrong and you discover that it's wrong, it's just an opportunity to fix it and change it and learn a little bit so it gets a little bit easier next time. But believe me, it's always going to be hard to do a really good painting because <laughs> your, your tastes change and your bar is raised every time and you're always chasing this perfection that you'll probably never get to. Well, at least I certainly won't. Right. Okay. All right, let's see, what are we gonna do first then? So the first thing that I wanna do is, um, I will keep checking the, um, the chat thing. So please ask questions. You know, if there's something that I'm missing out or if my volume is bad or, you know, the, more actually is gonna be the case of me getting in the way of the actual image. When I'm going in here, I'll probably block the whole thing. But anyway, let me know if I'm doing it wrong. Okay, um, let's see, what should we do? Right, good, brushes. <laughs> I should talk about brushes. Uh, I have all my brushes laid out right next to me so that I can easily get to them. And I use mostly rounds but I have some flats and I have some old sort of knackered brushes like this for like just making more interesting marks. Different brushes create different size marks and you want to create a variation across your panel. Um, I have a larger flat there or dagger that is almost. Um, and then I have these small rounds here, this is a zero. Um, I get my brushes from Jackson's, that's their Pro Creel range, it's all synthetic brushes. I don't use bristles. I don't really like them. Hog's hair, I've tried, I don't like them. It's a personal preference thing. Uh, what panels do you use? What brand I use? Uh, my bigger paintings are on linen. Um, I have custom-made linen, um, super fine 
canvases made up with aluminium stretchers from Jackson's. They're amazing. They're like the best I've ever used and I've used tons and tons of different ones. This is a dye bond panel. I do paint on aluminium. It's uh, really, it's fantastic surface uh, to paint on. Um, you can buy dye bonds directly from the manufacturer. So just type in dye bond and you can order it in big sheets and you can cut it with a Stanley knife and you flex it back and forwards and then all you need to do is sand it down and I actually use like a spray car primer spray for plastics which works brilliantly and I've tried everything you can imagine to, to prime these things with and sand them down. So I use this car primer I then use a spray gesso over the top of that and which is white and then I sand that down again a little bit and then I just use some acrylics and I just dirty it up just to give me a bit of a, a sort of a, a starting point. Um, so I just use some sort of uh, raw sienna or something like that and some burnt umber and that just gives me a little bit of a sort of starting point. But I'll go into big detail on how to prep that and get it exactly right because dye bond can be really slippery and that's a nightmare to paint on. Uh, favorite brand of paint? I paint with uh, Michael Harding's. Um, uh, my paints are nearly all Michael Harding's and except for my permanent alizarin, I use a Winsor & Newton alizarin. It's just, I just like it more. <laughs> I just think it's nicer. Um, okay, so today I'm going to, because we're just gonna paint Alla Prima in one go, which I'm just using the tiniest amount of solvent um, and I'll just do that just to break up the paint to get them flowing a little bit better. Uh, I won't be using any oil as medium today. If, um, if I paint, and I do all, nearly always paint in layers, um, if I were to go back into this painting again tomorrow, I would then start using uh, a medium. Uh, base panel looks nice. Is it oil painted already on the outside? No, it's just acrylics at the moment. It's just roughed up with a, a tissue and a brush. Um, <laughs> the War of Art, yes, The War of Art indeed. That is an amazing book. I, I have so many copies. I've given so many copies away. It's an absolute, oh my God. I've got it on audiobook. I read it regularly. The Resistance, always think about the resistance. If you don't know what I'm talking about, read The War of Art. It is an excellent book by Stephen Pressfield. Okay. Now then, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my drawing down properly. And that means going in and getting some of these darker shapes in place. So I'm going to mix up a nice pool of dark. And I'm going to use, you're right, you're right. I haven't told you what colors I use. Okay, I've got ivory black. I've got ultramarine blue. I've got burnt oxide, uh, sorry, transparent oxide brown. Um, raw umber, permanent alizarin, um, cadmium red, uh, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. And then I use a, a kind of, alternative to lead white made by Michael Harding's. It's called, it's called warm white. It's a lead white alternative. It's amazing. It's really nice. I find titanium white is too cold, too punchy. I don't like it. So that's what I use as my white. All right, so let's get a nice big pool of this. And I have my black there just in case I want to get in there. I don't always use it, but it's there if I want it. And then I'm going to put a tiny bit of alizarin in there. Just a little bit, a little bit of warmth. All right. Now, I often use Mole stick because I drink too much coffee and my hands are too trembly. Take your time. 
I'm always so excited at the start of a painting that I end up rushing a little bit too much. Tiniest bit of solvent, tiny, tiny, tiny. All right, I will try and keep talking, but sometimes when I'm concentrating, I'll just sort of like disappear for a bit. And I will, I will come back to you. Now then, let's just get everything in here. When I'm looking at his beard, I'm already thinking ahead, thinking that beard, right, what am I gonna do with that beard? What color am I gonna make that beard? Because it's kind of like a warm brown, but you can hide all sorts of little colors in the beard. Like, you know, raw umbers and yellows and you can put all kinds of little colors in there and it just gives it a bit of life. I'm gonna try and paint as quick as I can so we can get as much done as possible. And I keep measuring, I keep looking, right, what's, where's that shadow going? What does it line up with? I'm holding my brush at the moment in front of um, my reference and I'm seeing that the bottom of this moustache lines up with a dark patch in here. And I'm just roughly getting, getting things in place. I'm gonna go a little bit hotter here. And my colors are laid out like this because I'm gonna move across um, my palette here. So I'll gradually move across until I build into my whites. So I've got my big pool of black here and I'm gonna make it a little bit more brown, a little bit more red in there because I'm gonna go into this shadow in the neck And when I shot this reference, he's actually standing next to a big movie screen. He was just showing me a trailer for the film that he just was, was coming out. So it's got a cold sort of line on one side of his face there. You can just sort of see. Um, and uh, I'm shooting with a very sort of warm, hot light here. So these shadows are going to be quite cold, right? There's a general rule that you paint uh, warm lights, cold shadows, you know, cold light, warm shadows. But you know what? Uh, what you're trying to do is make a nice painting. Don't worry too much about, you know, the photograph and, you know, what's going on there. Sometimes you just want to make it nice. It's quite often quite a, like hot sort of line just as the shadow transitions into the skin tones. Get that shadow under his nose. Make that quite hot as well. Do you see, maybe it's too small on your screen, but just under his nose, as the shadow rolls around the edge of his nose, there's like a nice bit of hot, hotness. That's the blood as the light goes through the edge of the nose. Like in here, there's like a hot line We'll put it in later. You'll see, you'll see what I mean when I put it in later on. But keep looking for those sorts of things. Look, look for moment, opportunities to put the color in. We're not going to worry about the eyelid or any of those, that little detail just yet. We're just going to, we're just blocking in these bigger shapes.
Alright. Yeah. And then there's the eye under there. And the eye is over there. All right, we want to keep looking to try and keep things level, right? So I'm looking at that eye, that eye, keep trying to balance, keep looking across. When you do something on one side, move around to the other side, keep the brush moving around the canvas. So you're continually thinking, what's going on there? Let's move it around. I'm feeling the edge of that brow curling around. You see how it curls around the edge there? Keep adding more paint, 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 paint. That comes around here. And we've got quite a dark shadow in there, haven't we? Uh, so don't worry, Nicholas, no problem. You're not missed too much. You can always watch it back later. Yeah, it's dye bond. Okay, good. I'm glad that. People are helping each other out. And keep squinting your eyes. Keep squinting. And you can see I'm sort of gradually building, building around. Not getting precious about anything. Okay, all right, now let's get that under there. All right, I'm making progress. All right, let's get some brown in there. we we'll just start moving up around. All right, now see how hot that ear is there. Ears have always got loads of blood going through them. You can paint them almost as red as you like. And it'll, it'll still work out. We're gonna pull out those highlights of the ear later on. We're just gonna get it in here. That comes in there, good, good, good. All right, nice. Keep squinting. All right, good. A little touch of white. Just going to build out those eyebrows just a little bit. And eyebrows coming down. Try and move your brush like the direction, like here I'm moving it in the direction of the hairs of the of the, uh, of the eyebrow. Just think about like where the form is going. If I'm painting around a form, move your brush around the form. And then those brush strokes actually will, will do a lot of the work for you. You're using the texture. This is why painting, when you see a painting, a real painting, it's just, it's, you know, you just can't do it with a print just doesn't work. Prints look like the image, but you don't see all the little nuance of the, the brush strokes and things like that. All right. Okay, okay, down the bottom of that, all right. Yeah, 
darker patch, edge of the moustache in there. And remember, paintings always go through these phases of like, oh my God, it doesn't look like anything. Oh, what's he doing? Oh no, that's not right. And that's, that's true. <laughs> Sometimes I think, oh my God, how am I ever gonna get this back? But you've got to just trust the process. And also because we're just using solvent, it will start tacking up quite quickly. All right. Now, get a little bit of a bigger brush. And let's think about a bit of a background. This is so moody, this one. I think it needs kind of like one of those sort of like renaissance style backgrounds. Once we just get the shape of the head. So it's not just this big white one. We'll start covering the canvas as quickly as possible, really. Then you can really see. And the shape of the head is so important. Soft edges, we want nice soft edges. Might make that a little bit colder actually in the background there. All right. Okay, we've got the edge of the forehead and I've missed out in my drawing a little bit there, but that's okay. We can just we can knock that in. solvent yeah it's really quite hard to actually talking while you're painting you know I don't really imagine it would be but it really is I've got to be so careful that I don't just end up just sitting here quietly painting and not telling you what I'm doing all right that bit of the brow just there When you're painting, there'll be things that you know in your heart that you're not great at, right? And those, you've got to watch out for those. For me, I'm always getting the distance wrong. I always end up stretching the face out. The nose goes down a little bit further and that goes down. And I, every time I have to remind myself, watch out. It's gonna, you're gonna go too far down that way again. So know what you're not good at and watch out for it. Catch yourself. Don't be unkind to yourself about it. You know, it's just everyone has, a, has things that they are better at. But know that you're gonna potentially mess up in that particular point. Don't worry about it, just deal with it. And you know what, it feels good when you spot it. You go, ah, oh, I did it again, I messed that. Oh, I couldn't. It's so much better to spot it while you're doing it, to be looking out for it rather than like later on seeing it and thinking, oh my goodness, not again. And then having to correct it. Tiny bit, tiny bit solvent. I'm trying to separate out the head a little bit. In my reference image, you know, it's a bit dark beyond there and I probably should have spent a bit of time in Photoshop just cutting it out and getting it getting it right but you know it's good for you to see these things and be able to think to yourself yeah you know what you should have spent a bit of time sorting that out for us 
Uh, maybe I will do that. Well, nice. If, I, if any of you want this reference image, I'll make it a little bit better for you. Oh, it's got so much going on at the moment. All good things, all exciting stuff. Okay. That's kind of just creating some interesting shapes, textures. All right. Now then, where are we going to go next? We still move, we're st still sneaking up on the lights. So we'll go in and do some of this beard. Go underneath his mouth here. And then create those brush strokes. I'm just using a little bit of raw umber there. Okay, moving around, moving around. Now, yeah, let's let's really focus on this beard. I just I'm just gonna mass it in and then we'll see what needs to be done. Okay. I want to get that squareness of the jaw that you can see even in the beard. But you see how subtle it is? It's all just really subtle in the... Uh, they're little nuances. And we tend, and I say we, I mean everyone, tends to overdo things and you have to keep saying to yourself, no, less, less, less. Because the problem is, is when you look at an area, you look at it just an instant too long, your irises open up. It's like opening up an aperture in a camera and you overexpose it and then it's not dark anymore. So you have to look at the, you have to look at the whole thing as one. If, if I were to look in here, I'd go, oh, that's, that's so bright in there and I'd paint it too bright. So I want to look at the entire image and then decide how dark, how light is that. Do you normally work painting many layers? And if so, does it take a long time to complete a painting if each layer has to dry before you paint your next one? No, it's not obvious. That's, that, that's true. I do paint in layers. And yes, certain pigments take much longer to dry than others. And that's why I often have more than one painting on the go at once. This uh, method of direct painting is really good fun, just putting it all in in one go. But you see, if I'm working on a big painting and there's loads of things going on, I will, um, I'll do it in layers because I'll be tackling, you know, like the hands on one character and then, you know, I'll, I'll move on and do my, you know, some background elements. It all depends on how I feel and how it's drying and things like that. And there's all sorts of things. I'm mixing up a really hot bit for around here, but it's too hot. So I'm just going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue, um, maybe some raw umber. These things all neutralize a little bit. Neutralize. Okay, I can bring up the value a little bit using some burnt sienna. That's too much. It's good to go almost too saturated early on because you will find, at least I find, that things can become grayer and grayer as you move, as you move along. Get this hair in. I might get a big swash of that to make some hair. There we go. This is nice. Oh, 
that's not as too see in his hair there there's quite a lot of color actually and you can just keep layering in colors like this into hair it looks good i'm not trying to paint individual hairs i'm just moving around Remember, we're not looking for an exact likeness, okay? The camera is always gonna do that a million times better than we ever can. Well, actually, some of those photorealist painters that spend like three months on a painting, they probably do a pretty good job, but still, the camera does a better job. So, let's, yeah, so what I was saying is, let's not worry about exact likeness of things. You know, let's focus on making a really nice painting that we can be proud of. And that means that, you know, we take liberties because we're artists, we're creating something. We don't have to make it everything exactly the way it is. We can actually be kinder to our, uh, our models, make them look even better. And they like that. Paint, paint, paint. Get it on, get it on. Okay, it's actually quite gray in there, isn't it? So I get a little bit of white. Okay, and it's darker on the top as it, as the hair curls around and goes over the back of his head into the background. I'm scrubbing it in a little bit there. The nice thing about when you paint in layers is you can paint this sort of dead looking painting to begin with, just getting the paint on there, getting like a basic value structure and drawing in place. And you can then come back to it and just start punching it up with color and texture. It's really nice painting in layers. Really nice. I keep squinting. And okay. What I'm doing now is I'm spending way too long up here. I should have moved on already by now. All right. Again, keep moving around, keep moving around. Find things that you like. If you see a mistake, fix it. holding back from getting the lights in there until I've got a really decent feel for the darks. Ouch, that wasn't good. Yeah, get in there. Yeah, get a bit darker in under there. Keep looking. And normally I'm going and rolling right back, getting a really good look at it, but my blooming camera is in the way. So I like to get really get a nice view from a distance. You can see the mistakes so much easier that way. You, you get back and you look and you keep looking and looking and looking when you're close up, you can't see it. You've got to, you've got to get back, or get away from the painting. So I'm feeling that curling around like that. All right, I'm gonna make up a real gray here. 
Gonna use a bit of black, why not? Oh, that's too blue. So I'll warm that up. All right. I'm just covering, cover, 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 with just about the right sort of value. I'm gonna come back. When I've mixed a the color, then I think, okay, can I see that anywhere else? This gray, can I use it anywhere else? I keep coming back to that bit that's just level, just under the nose in there. I'm going to paint that a little bit up here. Make sure you've got a tissue. Keep wiping your brush down. Keep your brush clean. Ideally, you should be using a different brush from the darks and the lights. I always start out with the best intentions for doing this and then like forget almost immediately that I've got it because I get so sucked into the painting. But it's good to try and develop a habit. Right, I'm gonna use a little brush. Oh, damn it. Sorry, my brush cleaning fluid. The thing has cracked and it's leaked all over my table, which you can't see, so I probably could have just got away with not telling you that. Anyway, just bear with me a second. All right. All right, got a little bit distracted. I'm just gonna finish up this moustache area here. All right. You know, it's kind of abstract, right? This area here. We're just like creating sort of shapes we're not getting too attached. We're not like following lines exactly. I hate that when things are just too perfect. Show that a human did it. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Just get more paint, more paint, more paint, more paint. Oh yeah, that, getting that shadow. He's wrapping around the mouth. That's cool. All right, okay. I'm just gonna let's see the chin, the blood of the chin is coming through the beard slightly. There, you can see a kind of redness, kind of a darkness in there. Suggest it, you know, hints of it. Okay, sorry, I've been ignoring your questions. Uh, if you are working on a large scale with several people, do you ever pre-mix your paint? No, I never pre-mix my paint. Um, well, to the point where I will make a pool of dark and a pool of sort of like mid-tone and a pool of light-ish, but then I, I want opportunities to keep adding and changing as I'm going. If you pre-mix everything, you're kind of like stuck to these pre-mixes and you get sort of precious about these pre-mixes. But you want to, as you're going, you want lots of variety. You know, as you're looking at my painting at this stage, look at the variety, look at the, the sort of interest of all different colors and shapes and things like that. And that is what's interesting. If I had pre-mixed and thought, well, okay, this is going to be this color, that's going to be that color, then it, to me, that's not quite as interesting. There's no judgment on anyone who does it, you know, that's the, everyone has their own way of doing it. I, I'm just saying my aesthetic and you have to work to what your aesthetic is. What do you like? I like texture and nuance and you know, differences. And, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sneak in this little thing here. This is, oh, look at that. Right, I messed that up, but anyway. <laughs> 
do you still keep working 90 minute vlogs? <laughs> yes, I try to. But sometimes when I get mad keen, I work a bit longer. And you know what? Every time I work longer, I st the quality goes down. The quality does go down. You're better off forcing those breaks. Really important, actually. Get the break often, because when you step away from the painting and come back, you'll see all the mistakes horrifyingly rearing their faces at you, saying, look at this, how could you have left this like this? All right. What do I like? I'm going to just try and roll back a little bit just to see where I'm at. It's not terrible, it's not terrible. I hate making excuses, but it is quite hard doing this in front of people. I know there are absolute geniuses like Sean Cheatham, one of my art heroes, who can, well, he's done it like thousands of times. Mm. It's really hard. Anyway, no excuses. No excuses. I'm doing my best for you guys. Hopefully, you can see something interesting happening. Keep moving around, moving around. All right. Okay. Go and do it. Uh, Raw sienna, burnt sienna. It's really, really pink. You see that? I'm going to desaturate it a little bit. And then I'm going to take a big bit of transparent oxide brown. And I'm making my sort of mid-tone right next to it here. And I'm going to put a bit of red in there. Because it is, it's hot, it's red. It's even redder than that, it's hotter than that. Oh yeah, look, thick paint. Oh, lovely thick paint. And it, see, it goes a little bit lighter towards the top there. Oh, too much, too much. Too much. I'm making this sort of pool here that I can pull from. I'm just short of the hairline because I'm going to put in some some heat in there. Oh, I'll just feather it in just gently. It's, and you can make the hair, the hair line has to be really soft. Otherwise it looks like they're wearing a wig. That looks terrible. Look how red it is in here. It's actually, maybe it's too red. I think that maybe I didn't, I didn't color correct this very well, this picture. Um, <laughs> pretend we're not here. <laughs> I can't. You mentioned Sean Cheatham. Are there any other modern painters who inspire you? Oh my God, there are just so many. Oh, so many. Um, Daniel Bilmez, I had an interview with him the other day. He's excellent. He's really good. I really like his work. Um, God, who do I like at the moment? I can't think. I'll think of something in a minute. Let me focus on one thing at a time. Um, I really like Jeremy Mann. I like Hollis Dunlap. He's actually a good friend of mine. He stays with me sometimes in the summer. Um, what else do I like? Sean is kind of like one of my real art heroes. He is the one who 
inspired me to do this professionally. A little bit lighter, just above the brow there. See that? It's always where the brow just sticks up a little bit. feel the head, the curvature of the head as it goes around away from the light. All right, okay, I've been with that brush too long. I need to, I think I wanna just get these eyes right. Before I do that, let me have a look here. Uh, do you plan how many hours? No, I paint until it's done. I work, I'm in the studio at eight o'clock every morning and then I'm out painting, paint, 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 paint all day. Although there's loads of other things that I have to do as well, like flipping Instagram and all that rubbish. It's not rubbish, it's great, it's really good, but it's just, it takes up a lot of time and I'm not very good at it. All right. Here we go. Let's get this, get this done. All right, his eyes are kind of blue, but we don't want it to actually be blue. That's not, that won't look good. It'll look too crazy, it'll stick out. I'm getting in the way, I know I am. Oh God, sorry. As you know, there is no white of the eye. It's usually a kind of cold gray. Getting the eyes right is just, oh my goodness. Because the eyes convey so much. You can spend hours getting them right, hours. Quite often you have to just walk away and come back, come back another time. Also, I tend to paint them too big. I often paint them too big. one of the things that, I, that trips me up and I have to always keep an eye out for it. But when you get it right, oh my goodness, when you get it right, almost the rest of the painting doesn't matter anymore. Almost. All right, we're just, I'm just filling this in in the roughest value because all of this white that's sticking out is, is driving me mad. And and there's, there's so much to do. All right. 
Okay, all right, okay, 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 okay. Now, that highlight on his cheek. You see, you shouldn't, this is not good. You're supposed to come back to this stuff. But I just see it there. You know, I think why not just, why not just get that roughly put in? Because it really, really helps to describe the form there. Doesn't it? I'm just sneaking up on stuff. Keep cleaning my brush. Don't think too long about something. You see something and then you think, oh, that's not the same shape and I need to change it. Don't think, oh, that's an eye socket and that's that bone or whatever, the, um, the socket and there's the zygomatic arch that moves around the head. And, uh, if you think too long about what's supposed to be there, you end up, and I'm sure you've all heard this, about painting what you know rather than painting what you see. It helps to know what's there because you can look for it. But, you know, we've all got very different shaped heads to the sort of classic. What's going on here? All right. Okay, that's too, that's too dark in value there. All right, I'm going across to the other eye. Keep it level, keep it level, keep it level. All right. There's a, let's get that other eye bag in. All right. Slightly darker as it curls under. You know what, I probably should have painted this before I did this class. So I'm seeing... <laughs> oh, I should have done this first, shouldn't I? Rookie error. But I want it to be an adventure for me as well. If I'm just doing a painting that I've already done before, that's not really fun. It's not super challenging. Let's get that in there. It's coming together though, right? Like a little bit. You can all see it, right? As you see, and there's no pre sort of mixed anything here. It's sort of a lighter, colder moving in to a darker mix. Try and keep the lights on one side and then pull from the other side. And when you're going for those darker bits, Remember where to bring your colors to. Oh yeah, look at that under there. That's dark under there. So gradually, gradually bit by bit, here he comes. We start seeing Roland coming to life. He was so good in the North Water. I don't know if anyone saw that. It was a, it was on, it's on BBC iPlayer. Uh, he's really cool. All right. Now I can see that there's like a coldness coming in here as his, underneath his cheekbone. See, that's from that. You remember I said about he was standing next to a um, projector, like a movie screen. So I can just bring that in here. And you can see it, there's a little edge on the edge of his nose as well. I'm painting very thinly at the moment because you can still do a lot when it's thin. When you're getting it all in, 
paint really nice and thin. Wait, oh, I just rhymed there without meaning to. Um, if you put thick paint down straight away, you end up just pushing it around the palette, the whole, around the um, painting the whole time. It just, oh, it's just, it would be a nightmare. If you keep it nice and thin early on, We are going to put some thick paint on in a bit. And a little triangle of light in there. And then that, that cold bit. Underneath his nose, we've got that bit of grey. There's a moustache. Keeping it all barely soft under there. Um, sorry to distract you. No, please distract me. No problem. When did your interest in art start as a kid? Did you draw or paint? Yeah, I've been drawing forever. Drawing all the time as a kid. I was a kid pre-internet, so there was nothing else much to do. I think drawing is key. I still draw all the time. I don't draw, I don't draw enough, because it's definitely something that you can lose fairly easily. Uh, at what stage in your career did you start to use models, actors, presumably you started by painting family and friends, more expensive, I guess, but they will do what you tell them. <laughs> uh, I used models um, fairly early on, actually. Um, loads of people, uh, you'd be surprised, actually, how many people are happy to pose, especially now that I do use almost exclusively photography, well, no, exclusively photography, because people don't have time to um, sit for you anymore and to be honest I never really enjoyed painting for life from life I know that's really controversial to say and everyone says you have to do it and stuff and you do kind of have to do it it's definitely a bit of a rite of passage to paint from life you do see things differently um, but you know what it's just it's not realistic at all it, people don't ever stand in that way so when you say painting from life it's kind of weird because no one ever actually keep that position for that length of time they have to be in a relatively comfortable position and uh, and so you know you end up painting quite sort of boring poses that are as not lifelike as you can possibly imagine oh god I shouldn't have said that out loud should I but with a photograph you can give direction and you know you can get much more interesting poses and people are like if you get the right people, they love posing on camera and doing it, especially these days. Everyone loves being on camera, it seems. So it's not that difficult to find people who pose for you. And once you've got a few good paintings under your belt, you can show them and say, would well, you want to be in a painting like this? And you'd be surprised. Most people go, yeah, I'd love to be in a painting. And so it becomes easier and easier the more, the more you paint to get good people. Actually, that's the hard bit, is you get people who want to be in a painting, but maybe they shouldn't be in a painting. You know what I mean? They, maybe they not look very interesting. Oh God, I want to say English. I love painting people. I love painting people I know. Um, and I use quite often the same people in paintings because I know how they're going to look and I know how they're going to behave in the, in, in the photo shoot. Um, yeah, I don't paint friends or family that, that often actually. I mean, I, loads of people I've painted are now friends, but um, yeah, I, only, I painted my kids a couple of times, they hate it. Painted my wife a few times. That's always a bit controversial. God, I hope she's not listening. All right, 
you see how he's sneaking up on it? Gradually, he's coming out of the pay, out of the panel. I love this when you see the form when you you really take your time and just get it get it pretty good. You know, you don't don't rush it. The nose is always a bit pinky, especially at the end. And as it turns under, you need to get that shadow. And here you can actually start using some more punchy colors just in the turning point. When it turns from the shadow into the light, there's often an opportunity then to put in some brighter colors. And the reason for doing this is that, uh, you know, it just brings more life into the painting. Because we're always, it's always graying down. The more you're ch sort of chasing lightness or looking for something, you keep graying down, graying down. Okay. All right. Oh my God, I hope there's my gurgling tummy just come out on the microphone. Oh God, I should have eaten before. All right, here we go. See, I'm not doing any really complicated color mixing of skin tones here. I'm doing a lot of the mixing actually on the canvas, or on the panel itself. Because it's mixing with what's underneath. So there's no point mixing this perfect skin color on your palette only to bring it over. And then suddenly you're like, ah, it looks completely different because it's mixing with what's already there. Use a different brush again. Keep changing your brushes. You just, you know, you get stuck with the same brush and you get the same look everywhere. Make some changes. Put a bit of yellow in there. A bit pink. Okay, that nailed it. Sort of. Keep getting more brush, more paint. All right. A bit lighter. Get into the top in here. And I'm looking at that, this bit here, it's the same sort of color in there. It's close enough for me to just get something down. And then it's more red in here, isn't it? And then it goes slightly pink, lightens up a little bit as it comes over. All right, now I'm starting to feel where the forms are. A lot of these color choices, they're kind of instinctual. You get them from just painting more and more and more. You start to realize what's good what's going to look good in that particular moment. Oh, okay. This cheek comes down, wraps around. Also, my, um, this panel is at an angle because the camera is at an angle. So if you're thinking, oh my God, he's got that so wrong. It's like, it's because this is, you know, it's cockeyed to the camera because I'm in the way. If you, does that make sense? 
I'm saying. I keep coming back to that area. I haven't quite got that wrapping round nicely yet. I think it goes down more. I think I need to. It's looking a bit flat at the moment. It's gonna come though, it will come. Okay, all right. Sorry, I'm just going a bit quiet because I'm just trying to see what's wrong. What do I not like? I keep looking around all the time, never fixing on one, one area. Just keep looking around and around. He's got a bit of a bump in his nose there. Let's go a little bit. Let's get something really punchy. Look at that. We're just gonna make that on the edge. Okay. Let's look for the shape. Look for the shape of the nose. I keep squinting, trying to find the, the form. When you squint, you can really see things so much better. Okay. It's coming, it's coming. I might get out the little brush soon. I just want to get everything in first of all, really. Just get the general shapes in. Did I use other mediums? Yeah, I went through an acrylic phase which um, acrylics are fine, but they, they don't mix like oils and they don't give you the same, the same feeling, you know, they acrylics, um, they're so permanent, they dry so quickly. And they, they just don't have the nuance, you know, it's really hard because the, the fact that they dry so quickly, you can't work, work it very long. And so you have to, it's almost like you paint by numbers in a way, you sort of like bang it in and, you know, get it done kind of thing. All right. Now then, forehead is a little bit yellower. I 
a little bit whiter than that. See, just test it out. I may have gone a bit hard on that. A little bit of solvent there. A bit redder in the top. Okay, a bit lighter above the... This bit protrudes, it sticks out, always catches more light. See that that's not right there. Let's get that. It's got to match up with the other eyebrow, right? It comes around and we pull that from the top. And it's actually really hot. Yeah, let's see, move that around. Oh my goodness. I might just try and add that little bit of a eyelid. There we go. Sorry, sometimes I just got to focus and just think. Yeah. Tricky, huh? It's tricky. It's all right though, it's getting there. It's getting there. I'm just trying to get this painting done as quickly as possible so you, at least you can see a finished painting.
That's hard painting this fast though. Oh yeah, I'm gonna just soften that up in there. What I'll do is I'll finish this off after I've had some dinner and stuff and I'll be able to see mistakes much quicker and I'll punch it and then you can see the finished job. go you see that that starting you see it starts to get there for a while you go through this phase where you just think oh my god this just looks like rubbish it's not going anywhere oh my god, I'm embarrassing myself oh. and then gradually you just start sort of sort of getting there sneaking up on it I always call it sneaking up because it's it just suddenly it just reveals itself And you think, oh my God, there it is. I'll tell you what, I've got new, even more respect for all the guys that I've seen painting live. It's just, it's so much more difficult than you can imagine. But I know that I'm gonna, I'll get better at this. I'll get better at it. Let's get that top of that ear in. There we go. That's all it needs. That's all it needs. All right. I need to, now I need to do is I need to get one of these big fluffy brushes and I'm going to just make some here we go, boldish marks. Get a big when in doubt, get out big brush and just really just round feel the form see there's a band through the middle here when it flexes it comes in yeah see and just test it out all right now it's coming you see now it's coming <laughs> just wittering on. Is there only one still out there? <laughs> oh, the resistance. Who was it who mentioned the resistance earlier? The war of art. Telling you that you're useless, that you're rubbish. Our little voice that's just constantly telling you that you don't belong here. Well, it doesn't ever go away. <laughs> no matter how successful you get. <laughs> it seems not be hard. It's nice for him. Compliment him a little for that. <laughs> uh, yes, I would love to do more. I'll do more, but I'm going to get better at doing this live. Because... I'm a little bit embarrassed that it's not as good as I hoped it would be, the painting at least, but I am, I am slowly getting there. And it's so nice knowing that there are some people there because 
yeah, quite honestly, when I thought about doing this, someone really encouraged me to do it. And I, I said, no one would want to watch me paint. I'm constantly just, you know, I don't really know what I'm doing a lot of the time. I mean, I know what I'm doing, but I, like, I don't know that other people would value the way that I do it because I don't have a very sort of strict method of doing it. I see a mistake, I fix it, I see a mistake, I fix it. And what I wanna do is just sort of inspire you to not worry about um, mistakes and knowing that it's hard for everyone, everyone who paints, it's hard. Except for Sean Cheatham, he finds it easy because he's a legend. All right, okay, let's sort of, I call this my fluffer because it's this knackered brush and it does some good fluffing. All right, okay, okay, okay. These knackered brushes are good for beards as well. If you get like a tiny bit. Oh, shh. You see, you can, you can get some sort of hair beard action. All right. <laughs> it's sort of getting there. All right, what else is going on? Every time I start painting, yeah. Uh, inner critic is the harshest. Don't worry. Sorry. Inner critic is the harshest. And you know what? You almost need to worry if your inner critic isn't firing up. If you think that everything you do is amazing, that's actually a lot worse. Um, I worry about some of the people who think they're bloody marvellous and the work is really quite average. And so the inner critic is really important. As long as the inner critic doesn't stop you. Um, all right, let's get some more of that. All right, let's get some skin tones in around here because I've completely neglected this. This guy is so strong, by the way. He's in an amazing shape. Um, he was in London last year filming a big Amazon series. I think he's playing like a twin, so it'd be like two of himself. I'm going to paint the shoulder out there. I'm going to worry about the T-shirt. See, I just went as it rounded up over the, into the background. Just get that really soft, soft edges. Let's get, let's get loads of paint, let's get loads, 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 loads. Put a bit of that in there. Yeah, this might be too much, yeah, that's too much. We put some more of this in here. This skin is really hot. Just mixing up a bit of a mud pile here. All right, now I can see a collarbone just coming out there. I need to go into that area. See this area here is already drying up. You see that? That's because we're just painting with solvents. If you start, if you were using linseed oil, it'd still be wet like next week. And I like to, I, I like to crack on. I like to get on with it, get it done, get the next layer in.
I'm going to paint as though he hasn't got a shirt on because the shirt's a bit of a weird wide neck shirt thing and you can just fade that off. This is just kind of abstract. I'm not going to worry about that too much. There is a darkness in there though because that's where the collarbone sits. There's a lightness in there. That's just as the trapezius rolls around over the back of the shoulder. Oh my God, I wonder if Hollis or Sean is gonna watch this. I'd be horrified. It's looking cool. I'm making a real mess on here, but you know, it's good to have a big, um, a big palette so that you can make a nice mess. So you can really mix lots of paint. All right, <laughs> I'm fun to watch, oh God. Well, because I'm messing it up all the time. That's fine, that's good. I'm glad that I'm fun to watch, that's, that's nice. It's oil paint, we can make mistakes. And sometimes, as Bob Ross used to say, they're like happy little accidents or something like that. Bob Ross. Okay, now, what don't I like? There's a few things, I don't like the eyes. They're definitely not right, they look weird. The nose, the shape is kind of okay, but it needs some more work. Build the form, excuse me, build the form out properly. The beard is kind of okay, but I need to go darker in there. And I need to sort out this, uh, I need to sort out the background because that's not, I'm not being able to define that. I'm just gonna make it a quite a dark background actually, dark gray. That's okay. This is the thing right with panels, yeah, is that it you can pull the paint off really easily if you're not, not careful. So you can do something really good and then you just you can just pull the paint right off and you're like, ah, oh, flip. What a shame. That was looking really nice until I pulled the paint right off. Looks all right. Yeah, it looks all right. Make some interesting brush strokes. Shadow rolls over the shoulder. All right. I use the same mix I just used, and I'm just going to darken up this beard a little bit, trying really hard not to pull off the paint that I've already laid down there.
Okay. I'm going to go under this beard here. All right. That's not too bad. So it's getting there. It's getting there bit by bit. This microphone's all right. When I was testing it out, it was just rustling like anything. I was like, oh God. Ah, that's not, not right there, is it? That's not right. This, I don't like this brush. Let's go back to this one. This is why I say you've always got to have lots of brushes because sometimes you'll be painting and you just, you just get this like completely irrational feeling about a brush that you think the brush is somehow out to get you that every time you use it you just do something rubbish and you think oh my god what is with this brush the brush doesn't care but you've developed this completely irrational hate for this brush see what i'm doing is bringing that really hot alizarin around the edge of that shadow Yeah, and now I'm going to do the same thing in the lips here. Sorry, I'm leaning in front, aren't I? I keep doing that. I get closer and closer and closer, and then I lean and block any hope of you seeing what I'm doing. The shadow is being cast across and down. Here's another little tip for when you're photographing your reference. Always try, and I often get this wrong because there'll be any number of reasons why, there'll be time pressures or whatever, but try and shoot into the shadow side of your model. The shadow side is this side, right? The light is coming from this direction and this is the shadow side. And that is a, like a cinematography thing that um, it just creates a more dramatic looking picture. More dramatic reference, I should say. I can do a whole thing about shooting reference because you know what? It's so important to the success of your painting that you have a good reference. Oh my goodness. It's, it really, really does make an incredible difference. If you've got a really terrible reference, it can be almost impossible to make a nice painting out of it. I mean, it is possible, obviously. You, you know, the more you paint, you can you can design and you can change and you can do all sorts of things, but why make life difficult for yourself? Oh, look at that, that's really hot. That's really punchy in there. I want that for that bottom eyelid. Oh yeah, that's starting to get better, isn't it? That is starting to get better. too close sorry I keep getting too close to the I might get in there with a little noodly brush in a minute and just just do a few things with a little brush that will potentially change everything good 
Let's get this line in here. Ah! <laughs> oh, my thingy slipped for roll stick. Oh no, bad Vince, bad. Bad, bad, quick move somewhere else and then come back to it. If you end up spending too long in one area, you just, it just won't be right. It's going wrong for a reason. It's probably because you've been looking at it for too long. It's a bit browner under here, isn't it? Do you see how I just keep coming back to areas, adding paint, moving things around? It's, it creates a sort of more um, cohesive thing than if you try and follow like exact steps. I think if anything what I'm trying to explain is that if you keep moving around and keep adding paint everywhere you go, you, you get a more interesting surface I don't like paintings that are painted like perfectly, you know, that you've got this, this perfect color in this one area. I don't like that. I mean, again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's just, that's just my aesthetic. That's the, what I like. And it's important to know what you like. Like when you look at other artists, you know, you should almost like say, well, what do I like about this? What do I like about the way that they create a painting? What makes this painting interesting for me? It doesn't have to be the subject matter. It could just be the way that they put the paint down. You know, you just like the textures that they create. Like, I really not that into abstract painting, but I follow some abstract artists on Instagram that I just love what they do with paint. They just make some like really cool shapes and colors and things like that. And I love what they're doing, and I think, oh, that would, that's nice to include something like that in one of my paintings. Not that I've ever actually done it, but I kind of always think, you know what, if I have a bit of spare time, I want to experiment more with doing that. Oh, yeah, look, we're definitely getting there. But as you can see, it's the eyes are screwing up everything. Oh, what else was I going to say? I was going to say about creating interesting paintings. Yeah, I find that looking for inspiration in loads of different areas is really good. So like I was saying about looking at abstract paintings, but also like... Um, watching films or things that you don't necessarily like the film, but it's shot in an interesting way. They've got like a really good um, DOP that's done some really interesting, like I didn't really like the, uh, the reboot of, um, what was that film? The old one was with Harrison Ford, the future with the cyborgs. Oh my God, how am I forgetting this? Blade Runner. I didn't really rate the, the new Blade Runner, the, the reboot, but the photography in it was just out of this world. It was amazing. And I've watched it again just for that. Sorry, I've realized I'm kind of waffling, but I'm just trying to explain where I where I get my aesthetic, if, if that's what you like, if you like my aesthetic, I'm just trying to tell you where I get it from. Ah, it's not terrible now. It's, well, it's not totally terrible, is it? It's not terrible. Okay. Ah, this, right, this bit of his nose where the bone comes around. I want to feel that bit coming in there. And then that bone 
I feel like it's a real part of his character because Roland's had a really interesting background. He was in jail for, I don't know what, drug dealing or something or something. I can't remember what it was in Denmark, right? And really tough prison. And they were going to film a movie about this prison and they used him as the consultant for this prison, uh, this prison movie. And that's how he got his start in acting. So he didn't become an actor until much later on. But oh, he's, he's definitely seen some things and he's been in some tough situations, I imagine. I mean, he hasn't told me about a lot of the stuff because it was, but yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, so look, I switched this tiny little brush. You can buy these, these are cheap as chips, these little brushes, but you know what, they are actually useful. They really are useful to have some little brushes for doing stuff like this, this little, getting the eye right. See this, this eyelid, this sort of hooded eyelid, I think that's gonna make a bit of difference. Hold my breath when I do this. Okay. Do tell me if I, when I go off on one about, you know, the actors and whatever and the people I'm painting, if that's just not interesting at all, then for God's sake, tell me. I'm always interested in what, what the story behind the reference. But I realize that I'm not, not everybody's into that. And I keep squinting and I keep looking and I keep looking at the design. And I keep thinking, what makes it, have I lost the expression I was looking for? Have I lost the, the look of the guy? All right. Yeah, that, that, oh, that's got to be more hooded. Sometimes you have to over-exaggerate something and pull it back. Yeah. So now I'll go underneath that. It's really important to paint the darks really thin because they'll leave this uh, little raised bit of paint and then that will act as a highlight. and then you'll lose all that, that nice darkness that you've been trying to get hold of. All right. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, you know, uh, Anyone can do this. <laughs> uh, there is something you like about the painting. Well, about this painting, yeah, I like that that it's coming together slowly. That I wasn't sure um, what was happening with it, and gradually. And this happens all the time. You know, you go through this phase where you just absolutely hate what you're doing, and then gradually, bit by bit it starts coming back to you. And that's why it's so important to persevere and not necessarily give up, but walk away and come back later. And you'd be amazed how quickly you can fix something if you walk away from it and come back to it later on. It makes such a difference. Oh, did I do that too early, that little highlight on the lower eyelid? Um, oh, thank you, Ava. Gorgeous. <laughs> do you think it's possible to take a decent reference photo with a phone these days if you don't have a great camera? Obviously, it would depend on the spec of your phone. Uh, you can take good pictures, uh, reference pictures with a phone. 
Um, the thing is, what you have to know is you have to know what you're looking for of what makes a, a bad picture. And quite often it's things like lens distortions. Like when people commission me and they're not in this country uh, or they can't make it to my studio or to a, doing a photo shoot and they want to supply the photos themselves, they don't see the, the way that the camera lens distorts the photo. And that is, sometimes I see it with phone pictures, is you get it, like, because it's a photo, you just believe that that's how it is. But if you were to paint it, you'd be like, oh my God, look at the way that the nose is bowed out of the face, because you've got this kind of like wide angle lens that it, it inflates the middle of the face and it bows around and it looks terrible. But when you only notice that when you start painting it and then you think, oh no, my reference is no good. So you can do it, but you just got to be really sort of like, you have to know what you're looking for. And your phone camera, pretty much every phone camera is brilliant now. Like, it's, that's not really the issue. It's more, more like the, the lens that's been used. So when I do my photo shoots, I use either a 50 millimeter prime lens or I, uh, I have a zoom that has a, I think it goes from like 25 to 70, something like that. And those longer uh, lens, longer focal lengths, they tend to sort of flatten things out. And if you can stand back far enough, it means you don't get anywhere near as much lens distortion. And that really does make a difference. And it doesn't have to be expensive. You can get them secondhand. I, I buy cameras secondhand. It's, it's really not a thing anymore. You can buy good stuff secondhand and it's not crazy money. There's a, a little vlogging camera that someone recommended to me called a Sony ZV-E10 or something. And I was thinking about getting it as a, like a backup camera because some of the people that I shoot, uh, you know, I get one opportunity to, to do that photo shoot. And if my main camera, for whatever reason, I drop it or something breaks on it, you kind of need a backup camera. And I hear that's a really good one. And as I'm doing more video stuff, I want to have another camera available for different angles and things like that. So I hear that that's a good, a good one to go for. Yeah, you can use your phone camera. It doesn't have to be expensive. All right, you see with this little brush, sometimes you can just, it's just easier to sneak up on stuff. There's that word, sneak up again. I think it's flashed. Is it still working? Oh God. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you for the question. hopeless but it's sort of getting there I'm getting I mustn't get too excited because I can still completely mess it up but <sighs> no doubt I'll look at it tomorrow and think oh my god that was bad but that's what we were saying earlier weren't we that I don't know if I'll show Roland this one. If you look at my Instagram, you'll see a painting of Roland painted as, as Thor. He played Thor in a, a Danish, or was it a Norwegian movie? Mm. 
I suppose I'd bring it to him, but I haven't got around to it. Who's going to paint this painting? Come on, who's going to have a go at this? Does anyone want me to send them the reference? It's a fun one. I'll cut them out of the background a little bit to so make it easier. Who's up for it? Yeah, Susie's up for it. Okay, now there's some lines here. I'm gonna start sculpting out some little bits here. It's even darker than, I, than I'm painting it. I'm gonna use some. I'm gonna really push that in there. Yeah, okay. All right. Who else? Totally, I, I'll take your painting. <laughs> yeah, well, it's for sale. Everything's for sale. Special price for the people who stick it out to the end. A real original oil painting. But I want you guys to have a go at this. I think you can do it. It's just patience. Stick at it, keep going, keep adjusting. Look for opportunities to put some different colors in that you might not want to. Look, I'm mixing up cad red and yellow ochre. It's so punchy, but I'm going to try and put it in here. Yeah, that's good. All right. Oh, thank you, Jason. It's nice to hear, to read. It is sort of, sort of coming to life. What I'd really like to do is probably, I probably will finish up in very shortly and then I'll come back to it after I've had dinner and stuff because I've been working all day in the studio since 7.30 this morning. And I'm not making excuses, I'm just saying, you know, you get a bit tired sometimes and it's difficult to see what's, what's going on. And I'll finish it up and And then you can judge to see whether or not it's a good painting under the pressure of YouTube Live. See how I'm keep oh, Yeah, okay, I can see this. That needs to be, that's higher. Oh, that's higher. Okay. I keep on getting faster and faster as I can see things going. Let's get right in there. Sorry, I keep leaning in front of the painting. I shouldn't do that.
kind of getting there. Is it getting there? Am I deluding myself or is it getting there? I feel like it's... It is sort of getting there. I think it's sort of getting there. See that bit between the nose, the eyes up at the top of the nose? You see how yellow and there's quite a highlight in there. So we're going to get in there. Look, and it comes all the way down the nose. Yeah. I feel like I haven't quite, that's, yeah, this area here of the nose, the shape, the noses are so interesting, aren't they? Look, they're such a strange old structure. What a funny structure the nose is. And you know, you'll all know this, that when you paint something or draw something, you really look at it. If you ever want to sort of really understand something, you just draw it or paint it. It's amazing. You just, you know, you, like, people don't know how weird noses are, the shapes and how they work and how they're put together. But when you paint or draw, you are looking at it so intently. You really, you see all the shapes. And then when you meet people, you say, wow, that's an interesting nose. I'd like to paint that. Maybe best not to tell them. People get defensive about their noses and stuff. But when you're an artist, you see things so differently. You, you don't want, like, you want interesting people to paint. Oh, so it's definitely sort of getting there now, isn't it? It's sort of getting there. I know that you guys will see things that I'm not seeing and you'll be probably thinking, when's he going to sort that bit out? And I know what you mean. Right? Because you don't see it sometimes yourself. But other people will see it. Like, I asked my little 13-year-old son, he's got a brilliant eye, and I'll say, what's wrong with this, Benny? And he'll look at it and just go, oh, yeah, yeah, that is not quite right, Dad. Or, oh, there's the, that, what's that weird shadow doing there? And you'll see it straight away, and I'll be like, oh, damn, how did I not see that? I was like, good one, Benny. You nailed it again. That's all right, Nicola, no problem at all. Thanks for your time. So what did you say? I'm so color phobic after working in black and white for so long. Any tips on getting over that? Practice, yeah, just have a go, have a go. I will be doing a workshop and looking at people's work and giving advice and things like that. Um, yeah, so helpful. The, well, anyway, Nicola, please watch the rest of it when you get a chance. I'm gonna finish up soon. Oh, it's seven o'clock. Yeah, I think I'm going to give it another five minutes and then I will wrap it up as well. Let's, and maybe I'll come back to the painting tomorrow or something. But I think that that's, everyone has been kind enough to stay this, this long, I think maybe. And I think I'll wrap it up. Okay. Well, of course I'm going to just keep adjusting it. This is one of those things, isn't it? I'm just going to keep adjusting, adjusting, adjusting. But I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to have to let it go. And maybe I'll come back later on this afternoon, uh, this evening. But it all depends on what I can... Yeah, because I'm going to start rushing and messing it about, and I think that I'm going to wrap it up. Okay, well, I'm going to leave it there, I think. Um, 
thank you all very, very much for um, uh, sticking it out this long. Uh, hopefully that looks an okay painting. I will come back to it and I'll show you the finished, the finished job. But um, I am going to be teaching like a proper workshop. This was just a demo really. So I can start from fundamentals and teach you, you know, absolutely everything you need to know. I'll put it in an email to you guys and whoever's interested, um, then please, um, please sign up or let me know, give me some feedback. I'm gonna be doing more of this and um, I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed doing it. It was, um, it was a real experience and I'll do loads more in the future. Hopefully you like the painting. All right. Oh, Maddie, you did come. Excellent, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm seeing your dad on Monday. <laughs> anyway, right, okay, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thank you everyone so much for your time. Please do let me know what you thought of it. Send me an email or something. Please give me feedback, criticisms, anything at all. I can take it. Um, I'm really just happy to hear from you. All right, thank you.